Hello, YouTubers. Well, this is what's happened to me concerning the shadow people and that. Well, about two and a half months ago or so, my wife decided she wanted to leave. And it was devastating, and it still is. It hurts a lot. And I've been really down. And during this time, I didn't understand some things. But it was about two weeks from when we had broke up. I got mad at God. And I was going to sin. I was coming home from work. It was like God showed me something. As I was walking down the street, coming to the house, just got off the bus. There were these evil spirits, and I could see them out in the front lawn waiting for me, and they like ganged up on me, and they were like surrounded me, and I was terrified putting the key in the door, commanding them that they could not come in the house. Shut the door. Come in. Sit down, and I'm talking to God, and I'm like, Lord, well, he's not really talking to God. I'm talking at him instead of listening. I was saying things like, Lord, you have given me dreams before of the end, and you showed me that my wife Nikki and I would be together through the whole through the whole deal. And now she's gone and she says she ain't coming back. And either the dreams were a lie or someone's lying here, Lord. And I know what you sent me. And I know what I felt. Well, I still contemplated on sinning. Bought a big bottle of vodka. I was going to get drunk and hopefully I didn't wake up. There's another bad mistake. Well, I heard them evil spirits outside. Knocking on the door, ringing the doorbell. Tapping on the windows. Running on the roof. And each time I'd go to go pour a drink, now, I hadn't drank any yet. They would start back up. Well, finally, I got scared. I got really scared. And I fell to my knees and I repented to God. I repented and I cried and I cried. And I went and poured the vodka out. When he grabbed my Bible and my prayer shawl, and started praying. But as I went to put my prayer shawl on, something knocked my Bible out of my hand and ripped my shawl off of me. And that just made me more terrified. And I rebuked the evil spirit. And it seemed like it left, but they were outside waiting for I could open the, the shade and look, and I could see them right there. Well... Then all of a sudden, over the next couple of weeks, I get really sick, and I haven't been sick in years. I couldn't understand why I was getting so sick. I get sick for like a week, be okay for a day, and then I get sick again. I got pink eye. I got, I don't know, maybe it was strep throat. Um, it was terrible. I could barely walk. I could barely move. I even dislocated two toes in this time period. I still hadn't figured out what was going on. Well, this leads up to last week, December 20th. Right before bed, I get, I get this sound in my ears. And I had just gotten done being sick. And it was like a buzzing sound, a ringing sound. And I was like, oh, Lord, am I getting sick again? Am I getting tinnitus? What is that sound? Sorry, I'm holding my phone here. I mean, it kind of 
shaking a little bit when I tell this. It's still terrifying to me. So, I go upstairs and lay down, and something strange happened. It was like I could see my ex-wife for a second. And I love her dearly. I love her so much. I wish she would come home. And it's like she got into bed. And it was just for like a split second. But all it really did was just make make my heart explode with pain. Missed her. And praying to God about it. Asking him for a miracle. Asking him to bless her and her family and my family. My family forsaken me. They, they think because of what I believe, my belief in Jesus Christ is you are on the true life. That uh, doesn't fit in line with them. So I have no one, and all I have is God to talk to. I don't have any friends. Well, I got done praying, and I laid there in bed, and I got... I cried for about 15 minutes. I missed her terribly. Still do. But anyway, I started to drift off to sleep. And all of a sudden, I got that feel like something's evil here. And I open my eyes, and I'm like paralyzed. I can't move. I couldn't move my arms. I couldn't move my chest. I couldn't. I could barely breathe. It felt like something was like restricting my breathing. And I've never felt that before. And I'm just laying there in bed and I'm staring up at the ceiling. And I could see something there. And it was like something floating. And as my eyes start to focus, I could see it's like a woman. And I'm like, what is that, Lord? And right at that time, something to my on the side of the bed, right next to me, I feel another presence. And it's walking like down towards my feet. And I could see that this one's like a male. And he had horns. And then something grabbed my foot. Oh man, I freaked out. I had never been so terrified in my life. That is the most terrifying, most paralyzing experience anyone can go through. It looked like he had his hands out above me and was like trying to pull my spirit out. Well, I couldn't talk and I pray to God in my mind and I tell the Lord, Lord Jesus Yeshua HaMashiach, I need some help. And he said, get ready to fight. Fight for your life. I said, okay. Oh, it was so terrifying. But then again, I knew I had to fight. And fight I was going to do. All of a sudden, I'm like released from like this paralyzing entity that's holding me down. And I say, I rebuke you, you evil spirit, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. I command you not to touch me again. And it like got mad and like shot from the top of the floating on the top of the ceiling all the way down to my face and like she acted like she was going to bite me. And I like went to like give her like a headbutt and I sat up and it backed up. And then I knew that I had, you know, I kind of got this under control here a little bit, and I pray again, Lord Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, I pray in the name of your blood, I rebuke you, you evil spirit, leave this house and do not come back. Well, they didn't like that, but they left, and they made a lot of noise on the way out, and I was covered in sweat. I was shaking. I'm shaking right now holding my phone. I have it rested on my knee right now. Just to try to give her some support. I've never been scared like that before in my life. And I've had some terrifying dreams ever since 
I was a little kid, I've had evil, evil spirits come into my dreams. Well, that ended. I cleared the house. I didn't go back to sleep that night. And then on the way home from work the next day, I'm praying again. I'm like, Lord, what is going on? You give me these dreams that you tell me I'm going to be with my ex-wife at the end. I need some clarity. I need some confirmation. I need to know what's going on at home. I'm being attacked. And these attacks are getting physical. I'm all alone, Lord. Well, I go to sleep that night. And I had this dream. This guy's helping me move the, the bed that I was sleeping on. And the frame breaks, the box springs. And he points to it and he says, There, look there. And I wake up, startled, like, oh, oh, What was that? I fall back to sleep. And I'm like in an instant dream. And it's of my beautiful ex-wife, but right before my very eyes, she turns into a black snake. And I wake up once again, like, <gasps> and I'm like, what is going on, Lord? I get up, come downstairs, I drink some water, and I'm thinking about what just happened in my dream. And the doorbell rings. And it's like 3 in the morning. I look at the time and it's exactly 3.33. And I'm like, oh, this is weird. This is either bad news. And, and this is what was sad is that, is that there was a bad car accident on the route she takes to where, where she's living now. I guess she's living with her mother and father. I don't really know though. And I'm like, I start crying. I'm like, Lord, because they would come here. This is her address. I'm like, Lord, don't, don't let the cops be at the door. Don't let them. Don't, don't let her be dead. Well, I go look and there's no one there. I go to a window. So I hear a tap. And I see them same evil spirits I saw the first time. And they were outside the window, right there, right there. And they were saying, let us in, let us in. We'll take you to go see her. We'll take you to go see her right now. Well, I rebuke them. And I keep thinking about my dream where that guy says, here, look here. And this is so weird. I moved the mattress and the box spring over and There's a pentagram on the bed spring in the wood. I run out to the garage and I grab a chisel and a hammer and I chisel that stuff off and I pray over the bed. And this is something really strange. We got that bed from one of her friends. And when we brought it into the house, we felt that cold evil spirit and she witnessed this it. She felt it too. She's the first one who said, oh man, there's something evil here. And I'm like, oh, I hope we didn't bring nothing evil in with this bed you wanted. And I prayed over it and I prayed over it and it seemed like it went, it went away. But all our problems happened ever since that bed was brought in here. We used to love each other and have so much fun. And now we're split up. And she's so sad. There are certain things that after researching this phenomenon called the shadow people, astral, astral projecting, it is demonic. It is not of God. You are under a spiritual attack if you're getting this. They always seem to happen at night, between midnight and four. They seem to happen with sounds that you hear in the beginning. They also seem to happen when you have some big trauma or turmoil in your life. You have to repent of your sins, walk away from them. You're 
God's allowing you to be attacked. Well, if you don't know Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, our time is coming. Our time is coming. Our time is short. Follow His Word. Ask Him into your heart. Ask Him into your heart. Repent of your sins, every single one. For He died on the cross for you and shed His blood for you for the remission of your sins. I urge you, brothers and sisters, I urge you before it's too late. Because there'll come a day when it is too late. I pray that there's nothing evil attached to my soon-to-be ex-wife and, or her family. I pray for my family too. I urge you to do the same for yours. If you need me to pray for you, put it in the comment section. I'll pray for you. I will. For our Lord forgives us of our sins, but you have to repent. I love you, brothers and sisters. I hope this video has helped you. And if you have any questions about what has happened to me, feel free to ask. I'll answer all. I hope I hope the Lord the Lord finds you safe tonight. May He bless you and keep you and may His face shine upon you. Blessings to you all. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, our Savior. Amen.